to say, I know all of this is going on, but you know what? I'm going to do this, and it's going to have this impact. And you understand that that day you might not be changing the entire world, but you're, ch you're changing the conditions for the people that you're dealing with. And then you don't know what the impact of that's going to be on changing the entire world. So you sort of, I mean, that's sort of how, what gets me up every day. Because if I get up every day and I think about the macro problem, especially facing black people, I go back in my, I go back in my house. So what I try to do is say, yeah, here's this macro problem. But you know what? Here's some pieces of it that, that I'm focused on. They go work on relentless every day and try to make sure that that makes a difference. And then hopefully that'll have an impact, you know, on the, the larger problems. So, you know, that's that's sort of how I, you know, approach it. And I, and I, and I view this school um, as like <laughs> one of those m micro pieces of work. Because I think if we can make a, and we are, make a difference for these 200 kids, you don't know what the impact of that is going to be. And, and, it, and, it, and it, it, it really felt good last year when we had our graduation, and we had 12 kids that graduated, 11 of them went to college. Now, you can talk all you want about whether you like charges or that, but if we got 12 kids who graduated, 11 of them go to college, then my question is, show me what you got. You know, show me what you're doing. So, I mean, that's just sort of how I feel it. Because if you're just talking, then it, it, I ain't feeling it. Because we're not just talking, we're trying to do something. And we're trying to make a difference, you know, in these children's lives. And, 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 and that's what drives me every day. It's how do we make a difference in our kids' lives? And unless you figure out something concrete to do, then as far as I'm concerned, you know, you just yap it. And we got a lot of people jaw jacking who don't never do zip. All they do is talk. And they, and they always got some issue with what you're doing, but they don't have no comparables over on their side. And so that's sort of how we approach what we're doing. So let me stop and see what kind of questions you know I can answer for you all about CEO. Yes, sir. Come up with a couple different times, but uh, I'm in the, the school district and the unions. Uh, challenge the choice program or not to all right just uh, hate it or whatever they say it neg negatively. Yeah. Have you seen that over your ten years? Has that has that gone down no, no. or accepting of the change? No. I, I, I think that? no I, I think we have to understand it this way and I and so y'all know like I was a superintendent for four years so you know I, I, I mean I have an understanding a deep understanding actually of, of how the system works and, and what the issues are and all that. I think you have to look at it this way. The first thing is, many people think that because I support parental choice and I have issues with the union, I'm anti-union. That's actually not true, but I don't, I, 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 I don't spend any time anymore trying to explain why you think that, thing, whatever you want. But I clearly understand why unions got formed. Anybody who understands the history of American education, if you read Blackboard, uh, unions, if you if you read the one best system, if you read anything about the history of American education, mm -hmm. you will understand why people form unions, and particularly women, <laughs> because initially the people who started uh, teachers union were women, and, and and it started because of the issues that surrounded how women were treated within the systems run by men. And, 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 and so as the, as the, the unions developed, the, the significant change took place, in my opinion, when, when unions got the permission to engage in collective bargaining. And then the issue became really about wages, hours, and working conditions as the primary thrust of what they do. And when, and when that occurred, you had a much different kind of relationship internal to systems. So the way that connects to choice is, at the end of the day, it's about who controls the flow and distribution of money. <laughs> or accepting, in a relative sense only, of charter schools. But only if the charter schools can be unionized. <laughs> because if you have independent charters, the same issue, like applies, as what would apply with vouchers, except what, what gets added onto the voucher question are private schools. So you got a you got another layer of a problem 
But the fundamental problem is the same because it has to do with these are now independent entities that are outside of the control of the union. But what people need to be, what, what I would argue is, this, this this is not just an issue about the teachers union. It's, it's also an issue about everybody who's connected to the economic reality of a school district. And, 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 and that's why, I, for example, uh, like, like one of my favorite books is The Color of School Reform. Uh, and, and, and the reason why it's one of my favorite books is because you have to understand this issue when it relates to black people. is isn't just about race, but it's also about economics. Be be because in most cities, a school district is, if not the largest employer, it is, <laughs> it is very close. So like when I was a superintendent, I had 13,000 employees. And, 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 and for a lot of black people, school districts are their entree to the middle class. So when people get into the middle class by becoming teachers, become principals, you become aides. So when you start coming there talking about changing that, people, they, they're looking at, and, and I'm not hating them, I'm just saying it's a reality. That people are looking at their pensions, they look, they, they're looking at all of these things that will be impacted by this type of change. And, and quite honestly, our children's interests become secondary to these economic uh, 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 realities. Because anybody who understands the oppression of black people ha have to understand that it's both race and class. It, it, you, you can't look at it from just a race standpoint. And the reason why this book is real critical is because the book examines four school districts that are controlled by black people. And it raises the basic argument that, that people like me back in the 60s, like, we could just get control of these districts, that black people could just get control. And, and, and they said, now y'all in control. How come the kids are not doing any better? And so they looked at Detroit, Atlanta, Baltimore, and DC. They actually looked at Detroit with my wife as a superintendent. So the, the, the issue is clearly, you know, you got all these black people, you know, you, they're the superintendent, y'all in charge of the board. In fact, black people control the union. How come black kids are, are not doing any better? It, it's because you're in a system that was never set up to educate us. And, and, and just putting black faces in what used to be white, high, white, high white places down, that in and of itself don't change nothing. It, it's like the distinction between colonialism and neocolonialism. And, and, and so what, I, what I'm trying to get you all to see is that the, the choice issue right, is caught up within the totality of that reality. And, and, and so whether you like choice, don't like choice, at least be real about what it's all about. And it ain't about the, the separation of church. I, I don't mean to say that there are not some people who don't have that as an issue, but separation of church and state is not a fundamental issue. Here. Because the United States of America has always had policies that allow public dollars to go to private entities. Read those of us who went to school on a Pell Grant. I always find it interesting, you shouldn't go to, to private entities, and you got a Pell Grant and took it to Marquette University. Now how you gonna argue, how, what's the logic of that argument? There ain't none. What you hope it is that I don't know that, to go to private entities. And, and so you can't say that we, that we don't have a public policy precedent for what it is with it. So that's a, that's a long answer to your question. Yeah. <laughs>